Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I'm Drew Geraci. Today we're gonna to be talking about HDR versus SDR. It's the battle of color and picture. Uh, one thing I get asked a lot is if there's really a difference between HDR and SDR, and the short answer is hell yes. Uh, but the bigger question is, why do you really need it? Um, well, you really don't need it um, unless you really want to see the color and the picture the way the artist, which is usually the director or the cinematographer, uh, envisioned it in the first place. A lot of people think that HDR means more contrast, more saturation, brighter picture, uh, but HDR isn't always necessarily brighter, or more vibrant, or contrasty, uh, so it's kind of a misconception there. HDR, which stands for high dynamic range, is there to show you the things that may be blown out or hidden in the shadows due to lack of dynamic range. If you own a TV or a monitor that's capable of doing at least HDR10, which is the lowest form of HDR, uh, you'll see a huge difference in the quality of picture of the movie or the content when it's viewed or streamed in HDR. Uh, you'll be able to see more into the shadows, more into the midtones and the highlights um, of the image. And this is great because you'll ultimately see more of what the director or the cinematographer wanted you to see in the scene, but couldn't because it was limited by SDR, which stands for Standard Dynamic Range. Uh, there's a wide variety of HDR monitors and TVs out there, and they aren't all created equal. Uh, they range from HDR10, which is up to 1,000 nits, or HDR10+, which is up to 4,000 nits, and nits represents the maximum luminance level of the TV or monitor that you're watching it from. Uh, the higher nit value, the brighter, the richer the scene will look, um, ultimately, uh, when viewed. Uh, the more nits you have, the wider the whites will look, and the same goes for black. They'll be very dark and rich. Um, the rest uh, goes for the color spectrum as well. It gives you a much larger tonal range and ultimately better color since the HDR color spaces that are out there um, allow the viewer to see more individual colors uh, which should make the image pop more and look more brilliant just depending on you know what the director's vision is. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of HDR versus SDR when viewed in a true HDR 10,000 nit monitor. Uh, it's important to understand though that you can't see HDR content on an SDR platform or in this video since I'm not shooting in an HDR, uh, but you'll get the idea of just how different HDR and SDR compare um, using the uh, visualizations that I've provided. Um, note how drastically different the highlights and shadows are compared to the HDR. Um, in the SDR monitor, highlights are blown out, the shadows are super dark, uh, and the color information is missing uh, from parts of the content. On the HDR monitor, you'll see that the content is much more balanced, uh, having more range and color, and revealing more of the intended composition. It's truly a night and day difference when you view this live in person, though. I want to give a big thanks to uh, Roman DeGiulio for allowing me to use his beautiful work uh, as an example of what fantastic HDR mastering looks like. Over the last couple of months, I've received a few comments talking about how HDR, when turned on Windows 10, you know, is really dull and it washes out the color. Um, and to those comments, I really want to say that you're not viewing true HDR, which is why it appears that way. Um, a lot of folks, when they switch their monitors to SDR to HDR, will notice that the screen is super flat in Windows 10 and their mouse will disappear in the background and that they think that that's HDR, but it's really not. Uh, Windows 10 isn't an HDR platform, and because of this, you'll see things that are washed out, dull, uh, and fade into the background. It's only when you view true HDR content that you'll see the real power of your monitor come to life. Uh, the same goes for applications. About 95% of the applications on the Windows platform don't support HDR yet, which means everything is going to look dull and flat. Only editing programs like DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, Cinema 4D, Blender, uh, and a few other dozen games actually benefit from HDR color spaces provided by the HDR monitor. So if you're looking to switch over to an HDR platform, make sure you understand what it is you're supposed to be seeing and not seeing. Don't get upset if you see content that's washed out or dull, uh, because it likely means you're not actually watching HDR content. And if that's the case, just turn off HDR. Uh, and to get the best color, just turn on SDR, because Rec. 709 is a great color space. Uh, at the end of the day, HDR is meant to elevate and enhance the viewing content. And if you do end up getting an HDR display, uh, you'll likely be blown away at just how amazing the viewing experience is. If you have any HDR content that you think is worth watching, put it down in the comments below so that everyone can enjoy it. Uh, and if what you found today was helpful, please like, subscribe, and as always, happy shooting. Thanks for joining me, guys.